The Samaritans were a group formed in the northern kingdom of Israel following its conquest by the Assyrians in 722 before Christ. After the Assyrians exiled much of Israel's population, they resettled other captured peoples from various regions into this area, creating a mixed population with a distinct form of Judaism. Though they shared some religious texts and practices with the Jews, their beliefs and worship differed, including the establishment of their own temple on Mount Gerizim. This divide led to long-standing animosity between the Samaritans and the Jews. Notably, the Samaritans opposed the rebuilding of the Jewish temple after the Babylonian exile, and in 128 BC, Jewish leader John Hyrcanus destroyed the Samaritan temple. By the time of Jesus, Jews generally avoided Samaria and had little to no interaction with Samaritans, shunning even minor favors or loans. This hostile backdrop adds depth to the account in John's Gospel, where Jesus, in a rare act of cross-cultural engagement, speaks with a Samaritan woman at a well in the city of Sichar. This encounter challenges the existing social barriers, emphasizing themes of inclusivity and compassion that stood out sharply against the context of the time. The setting of the encounter Jesus' decision to travel through Samaria stemmed from the growing attention of the Pharisees to the fact that his disciples were baptizing more followers than John the Baptist's. To avoid tension between John's followers and his own, Jesus left Judea for Galilee, taking the direct route through Samaria, a route most Jews avoided. However, Jesus had a mission in Samaria. When Jesus arrived at Jacob's well near Sichar, he met a Samaritan woman. In asking her for water, he broke cultural norms, as Jews typically did not interact with Samaritans. This encounter gives the contrast between Nicodemus, a respected Jewish leader who sought Jesus at night, and the Samaritan woman, with a poor reputation, who came to the well in broad daylight. Despite their differences, this moment became life-changing for her and opened an opportunity for dialogue about faith and truth. What are some of the taboos in your own culture that could hamper your witness to others? The woman at the well. Here we get the encounter with the Samaritan woman. Jesus opens a conversation by asking her for a drink, which breaks cultural and social norms, as Jews did not typically associate with Samaritans. By asking a favor rather than offering one, Jesus begins with an approach that draws her in, using trust to build a connection. He then introduces the idea of living water, a metaphor for the spiritual life and renewal he offers, symbolizing a thirst that can be quenched only through him. As with Nicodemus, who questioned Jesus about being born again, the woman initially misunderstands his words, thinking he is referring to literal water. Jesus, however, is pointing her toward a deeper, spiritual need a new, transformative experience through living water, symbolizing eternal life. The concept of living water has roots in the Old Testament, where in Jeremiah 2 verse 13, God is described as the fountain of living waters, and in Zechariah 14 verse 8, living waters flow from Jerusalem. Water, essential to life, serves as a powerful symbol for the eternal life and spiritual satisfaction that only Jesus can provide. Sir, give me this water. Let us read Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 25 verse 27. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. This chapter speaks of a profound transformation. God promises to cleanse his people, give them a new heart and spirit and replace their heart of stone with a heart of flesh. This echoes the message Jesus shared with both Nicodemus and the Samaritan woman. Jesus used natural symbols, birth and water, to express the need for a spiritual rebirth and transformation. In both conversations, Nicodemus and the woman initially took Jesus' words literally. Nicodemus asked how one could be born again, thinking only a physical rebirth, while the woman thought Jesus offered literal water that would end her trips to the well. However, Jesus was pointing both of them toward a new, inward life change that only God can initiate, much like the inner transformation described in Ezekiel. When the woman asked Jesus for the living water, 
He responded by asking her to call her husband. This abrupt shift addressed her avoidance and invited her to confront her deeper needs and personal history. As Ellen G. White noted, before she could receive the gift of new life, she needed to acknowledge her sin and her need for a savior. Through this encounter, Jesus gently guided her to recognize her spiritual need, preparing her to receive the transformative living water he offered. The Revelation of Jesus In John 4 chapter 16 verse 24, Jesus reveals his knowledge of the woman's private life by mentioning her history with five husbands and her current unmarried relationship. This insight into her life shows that Jesus truly knows her deepest secrets, prompting the woman to recognize him as a prophet. However, she diverts the conversation to a long-standing religious dispute between Jews and Samaritans about the correct place to worship. Jesus responds by explaining that true worship isn't confined to any specific place. Instead, genuine worship must be in spirit and in truth, emphasizing a direct and personal relationship with God over ritual or location. This explanation helps the woman realize a profound truth about God and worship. Then Jesus reveals his identity as the Messiah to the woman, directly stating, I who speak to you am he. Remarkably, this is one of the few times in the Gospels, and the only instance before his trial, that Jesus openly declares his messianic identity, and he does so to a Samaritan woman with a complicated past, showing his compassion for those on the margins. This revelation, along with his knowledge of her secrets, gives her strong reason to believe in him and transforms her perception of who he is. The Testimony of the Samaritans In John chapter 4 verse 27 to 29, the woman takes a surprising and immediate action. She leaves her water pot behind, rushing back into the city to tell the people about her encounter with Jesus, saying, Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Her eagerness to share her experience shows the deep impact Jesus' words had on her. People from the city come out to see Jesus based on the woman's testimony. Many believe in him because of her words, and after hearing Jesus for themselves, even more come to faith, acknowledging him as the Savior of the world. This event demonstrates that the gospel can spread powerfully through personal testimony and authentic experiences. Jesus' conversation about the harvest highlights the urgency and inclusivity of sharing the gospel. He teaches his disciples that reaching out to others, even those different from themselves, is essential to his mission. Genuine testimony can inspire others to seek the truth, and the gospel can transcend social and cultural boundaries, leading to widespread belief.